My name is Hana Mariz Manjola. How it works? The electricity produced from hydropower is called hydroelectricity. Hydropower plants capture the energy of falling water to generate electricity. A turbine converts the kinetic energy of falling water into mechanical energy. Then, a generator converts the mechanical energy from the turbine into electrical energy. Good day, I'm Ken Emerson Suelio, and for the history of hydropower, it started over 2,000 years ago when the water wheels were being used by the ancient Greeks to grind grain. It was not until the mid Middle Ages that technology was spread to Europe. Hydroelectric power was also important during the Industrial Revolution at the beginning of the 1800s and provided mechanical power to, for textile and machine industries. The most important year in hydropower history was in 1831 when the first electric generator was invented by Michael Faraday. This laid the foundation for us to learn how to generate ele electricity with hydropower almost half a century in 1878. In 1882, in Appleton, Wisconsin, the first hydroelectric power plant began to generate electricity. In 1889, the total number of hydroelectric power plants sold in the U.S. had reached 200. In 1936, the Hoover Dam was opened and generated 1,345 megawatts and named as the largest hydroelectric power plant. In the first half of 1900s, the hydropower became the world's most important source of electricity. And in 2008, Three Gorges Dam in China was built. This is the largest power plant in Kern. These are the hydroelectric power plants in the Philippines. Agusan Dam. Its official name is Agusan Hydroelectric Plant. It is located at Libona, Bukidnon. It serves the immediate domestic and industrial requirements of the area. The runoff river plant consists of two 800 kilowatts turbine generators that use water from the Agusan River to generate electricity. It is connected to the local distribution grid Sepalco through the Transco distribution line. Angat Dam It is located at Norzagaray, Bulacan. It's a concrete water reservoir embankment hydroelectric dam that supplies Metro Manila and nearby provinces with water. It was a part of the Angat Ipo Lemesa water system. Binga Dam. Its official name is Binga Hydroelectric Power Plant. It is located at Itogon, Benguet. The Binga facility was constructed in 1956 for power generation and flood control. The dam and other non power components are owned by the government through the National Power Corporation. Bustos Dam. Its official name is Bustos Dam Angat After Bay Regulator Dam. It is located at Bustos, Bulacan. It is a small irrigation dam at Bustos, Bulacan and often mistaken by the locals as Angat Dam since it is located close to the nearby town of Angat. Aliraya Dam. Its official name is Kalayaan Palm Storage Project. It is located at Lumban, Laguna. The reservoir created by the dam Lake Caliraya initially supplied one of the oldest hydroelectric power plants in the Philippines and later became a popular recreational area for numerous water sports and fishing. Kaseknan Dam Its official name is Kaseknan Irrigation and Hydroelectric Plant. It is located at Rizal, Nueva Ecija. The multi-purpose dam provides water for irrigation and hydroelectric power generation while its reservoir affords flood control. It was considered one of the most expensive hydroelectric plants built in the country, being next only to San Roque Dam. Lumot Dam. Its official name is Lumot River Dam. It is located at Cavinti and Lumban, Laguna. The dam was constructed across Lumot River, creating a reservoir now known as Lumot Lake or Shera Lake. Lumut Lake provides additional water through a bellmouth spillway and tunnel to Kaliraya Lake, which in turn serves as the upper reservoir for the Kalaya and Palm Storage Hydroelectric Plant. Magat Dam. It is located at Ifugao and Isabela. 
Magat Dam is one of the largest dams in the Philippines. It is a multi-purpose dam which is used primarily for irrigation about 85,000 hectares of agricultural lands, flood control, and power generation through the Magat Hydroelectric Power Plant. Pantabangan Dam. It is located at Pantabangan, Nueva Ecija. The multi-purpose dam provides water for irrigation and hydroelectric power generation while its reservoir, Pantabangan Lake, affords flood control. The reservoir is considered one of the largest in Southeast Asia and also one of the cleanest in the Philippines. Pulangi Dam Its official name is Pulangi 4 Hydroelectric Power Station. It is located at Maramag Bukidnon. It uses two reservoirs produced by damming the Pulangi River to supply water to a runoff the river hydroelectric power plant. The power plant is capable of generating 255 megawatts of power. San Roque Dam. It is located at Pangasinan and Benguet. San Roque Dam is one of the biggest rock-filled dams in the world. It is placed on the Agnar River. This dam is in a list of 20 largest dams of the planet. Its high is 200 meter and width 1,200 meters. The dam composes a large artificial lake, which area is about 12,000 square meters. The advantages of hydropower are it is a clean energy source, no fuel cost, it is renewable, low operating costs, and little maintenance, low electricity costs, and no greenhouse gas emissions or air pollution. The other advantages of it are energy storage, small size possible, reliability, high load factor, long life, it is stable and reliable, it is safer than other energy sources, it offers opportunities for recreation and tourism. However, the disadvantages of hydropower can disturb environment, dislocation, and tribal rights. Wildlife and fishes get affected, earthquake vulnerability, siltation, tail risk, dam failure, cannot be built anywhere, long gestation time. It is also expensive to build. It can cause environmental damage. It can lead to drought. It can cause insufficient supply of water, and it, in, it can cause floods to low-lying regions. I am Kana Karpusen. I am going to talk about the problems regarding hydropower electric power plants in the Philippines, as well as the solutions proposed by the government and private sectors. The first problem that we have here is the upstream flooding, destruction of agricultural areas and animal habitat, and disruption of communities in affected areas have affected the attractiveness of large hydropower projects in the country. We know that the construction of hydropower as well as the operation can have environmental and societal consequences that greatly depend on where the project is located and how it is operated. Hydropower projects can reduce the flows and rivers downstream if the upstream flows are trapped behind a reservoir and are diverted into canals that take the water upstream to a generation unit. Lowering the flows in a river can alter water, temperatures, and degrade habitat for plants and animals. Less water in the river can also reduce oxygen levels, which damage water quality. This creates artificial flow patterns in the downstream river that may be very different from the flow patterns a river would naturally experience. Hydropower operations may differ from these natural flow patterns, which has implications for downstream riparian and aquatic species. If water levels downstream of a hydropower project fluctuate widely because of generation operation, fish could be stranded in suddenly shallow waters. If operations cause a more static flow schedule throughout the year than what a river would normally experience, the movement of sediment along a river section could be disrupted reducing habitat for aquatic species. Fewer seasonal flow events could also cause a riparian corridor to thicken into a less dynamic channel as saplings that would usually be seasonal flint by high flows are able to mature. And the second problem that we have is high upfront cost. According to the Department of Energy, the average investment cost needed for a hydropower plant is currently at $2.5 million. The average period of development of a hydropower plant in the Philippines, 
takes about seven years in which three to five of those years will be allocated for the construction of the power plant. According to the Energy Department's Renewable Energy Division, hydropower plants have to have a low plant capacity factor compared to other resources, resorting, resulting in longer return on investment. Further, hydro plants, specifically runoff river scheme, has an intermittent nature. Thus, hydropower developers will encounter difficulty in competing in the market. And the third problem is the challenges of producing indigenous sources of fuel in ways that would not harm the environment. This problem is most likely similar to the first problem, but it talks about more on the exploitation of fossil fuels used in hydroelectric power plants. Now we go to the solutions made or proposed by the government and the private sectors. The first solution is to build and to develop mini hydropower plants in some parts of the Philippines. This solution is made by the Manila Electric Company or Miralco partnered with their Power and Redevelopment Corporation or REDC. REDC said this mini hydropower plants will use run of river scheme resources for renewable and efficient energy production while minimizing environmental impact. A run of river hydroelectrical system is a design scheme for power generation that is at least disruptive to the environment. The scheme works by redirecting river water through a weir into conveyance pipes towards a penstock and feeding it downhill to the power stations. Renewable energy is being generated from a run-up river hydropower system. And by building and developing mini hydropower plants, there would be lesser environmental impact because of the lesser area involved. And the last solution that we have here is the provision of awareness on the state of the Philippine hydropower developments, innovative engineering designs, trends and emerging related technologies, lessons as well as best practices towards sustainable hydropower development. By conducting this summit, people will be provided insights on how will this lessen the environmental impact and the development of hydroelectric power plants in the Philippines. Past Hydro President and Sunrise Water and Electric Company Incorporated, President Jose Silvester and Natividad said the summit would also provide the venue for networking opportunities towards establishing long-term partnership between government regulators, developers, financing institutions, and technology suppliers. Sylvester said that we look forward to the presentation of the Department of Energy on the roadmap for hydro power development in the country, and together with the other stakeholders, we will plan on how best we can address the challenges of producing clean and indigenous source of fuel. And that ends our report and we hope that you have gained some insights about the hydroelectric power plants in the Philippines.